not only does the easy angle give you a value for all three of those planes, but if specifically for the transverse plane, you can measure a scapular rest position if they're in a more protracted or internally rotated state. And then as they move their arm, you can measure internal and external rotation of the scapula. Welcome to this Easy Angle podcast, where today we have the pleasure of speaking with Oliver Silverstone, who is a researcher that recently published a study in the Journal of Athletic Training in the reliability of using Easy Angle to measure scapular mobility. So Oliver is a PhD student and his research focuses on shoulder biomechanics and on upper extremity rehabilitation strategies. As an athletic trainer, he focuses his investigation on the movement patterns of athletes with a view to understanding the contributing factors to pathology and injury prevention. So he has his, he's from Maine originally, and he has his, um, his undergraduate degree from the University of Vermont and his master's from the University of Kentucky. So welcome, Oliver. <laughs> Hello, Denise. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. And we, we, had the, uh, we had this podcast yesterday. We went through the whole process. And due to a technical difficulty, we have to do it all again today. So thank you so much for giving your time for a second day. Of course. But maybe, uh, maybe you can start by telling us a little bit about um, how you found out about Easy Angle in the first place and you know, what led you to, uh, to using Easy Angle for this study. Sure. So uh, Dr. Tim Uhl at the University of Kentucky was introduced to the Easy Angle uh, device at the combined sections meeting in 2018, 18. I believe. Yes. 18, yes. is that right? Yeah. yeah. So in 2018, and then he came back to, to Lexington, Kentucky, uh, back to campus with the idea that we could use the Easy Angle um, for measuring scapular mobility and that was kind of based off of a previous question that he had that was that aimed to investigate transverse plane motion of the scapula and a, a great way to to measure it in the clinical setting um, and he thought that the easy angle would be a great way to do it and after a couple of years of study we determined that it is so he was first exposed to it brought it back to campus and it developed into my master's project and how, and that's how did- how- how did you go, go about? Uh, how did you go about coming up with your research question? Like, how did you go through that development process? We, uh, Dr. Uhl was was had this question for a long time, and it, the question of the transverse plane motion of the scapula is is difficult to answer because the scapula is kind of an animal in the sense that it's it's complex and it's deep to a lot of tissues, and it's really hard to kind of get a hands on feel. So a standard goniometer just wouldn't work with it. And then as we delved into the literature a little bit, we found that there are ways to measure the scapula, but they involve crazy things like radiographs and MRI and then bone pins and, you know, crazy lab setups like motion analysis and then video-based analysis. So nothing that the the hands-on therapist or athletic trainer could actually use. So his question was, what can we place in the hands of a treating clinician that will evaluate scapular motion. Okay, and when you when you started, um, did you? I mean, how did you go about? It? Did you have any funding for your study before you, before you started? So yeah, so we took that question that we we wanted to use the easy angle or any device to measure scapular motion, and then we we put together a grant and which was successful in receiving funding from the National Athletic Trainers Association. Uh, I received the master's grant for some funding on this project, and we took that funding and we applied it to this project by subject reimbursement materials, and um, that proved to be really helpful as we recruited and enrolled people across two years um, and brought some people back in a couple times, and that money always helps bringing people in for studies. So we're thankful for that. But uh, as we as we took that project and we we took the easy angle and we moved forward with it. There were some ups and downs at first, as, as you can imagine. And um, one of the most interesting things we, we had difficulty with was, was deciding how we were going to place the easy angle on the scapula. And I think that kind of goes into the next part of this discussion would be 
how are we actually measuring scapular motion with the easy angle. And in pilot testing, when it was just the easy angle, and myself and a few other researchers, we would put it on the scapular spine for both upward rotation and transverse plane motion, um, just with a different orientation. And we were getting pretty great results, uh, what we thought was pretty ballpark values. But then when we moved to the validation component of this, this larger study we were in, we ran into the issue of the video-based system needed the acromial marker cluster on there. And the acromial marker cluster is the three little dots that you see in the movies and stuff when they make animation. And when they put that, when we put that on the, the acromion, it dominated the area of the posterior acromion. So we had to move the placement of the easy angle a little bit more medial on the scapular spine. And that kind of placed, uh, our values were, were very good still but it definitely a little bit more air and less precision when you can't palpate the scapular spine as well. So, but we have to do that because of the validation. So anyway, as we move forward with the study, the pilot testing kind of found some errors or found some things that we could improve on. And we developed a pretty standard operating procedure, which at the end of this study we determined was the best way to use the easy angle by following kind of set patterns for how to put it onto the scapula. Okay, so you validated the easy angle against the, the video testing system. Did you also do a, a validation against any other tools? We did, um, again in pilot testing, we, we took the easy angle across, uh, across Kentucky to um, Marshall University in Western Virginia where we met with Dr. Timmons and he has a different setup for measuring motion analysis so he uses the electromagnetic motion analysis. Okay. And we had about a, an afternoon there uh, with the easy angle on his setup. And we were playing with it with a few different volunteers that we could find in the hallways. And um, that's kind of how we learned the orientation the axes that we would need to be looking at. So as we use the easy angle there, um, we found, again, we were very, very consistent. We were getting good values. And then we took what we learned there back to campus. And then for the next little bit of summer, we, we developed a pretty standard protocol for our system, which is a 14 camera based system, which uses retroflective markers rather than the electromagnetic markers. And, and anyone who's curious can look up the Vicon system is what we used. Um, and uh, so uh, technically we did two. We were only reporting on one since we had full two years with one of them, the Vicon, but the Sports Medicine Research Institute at Kentucky. But um, we did get to play around with Mark Timmons over in Western Virginia, which is pretty fun. Oh, that's really great. And mm -hmm. why, tell me, why is it important to measure scapular mobility? Like, what's the, what's the point? <laughs> what's the point? <laughs> well, that's a great question. I think a lot, of, a lot of treating clinicians often overlook goniometry in general, their range of motion measurement. I know that as a young clinician, I, I roll a little bit when I hear you should be measuring range of motion. And I know that um, the more accessible that you make it, the more likely somebody is going to do it. And I think that's the beauty of using something like the easy angle where it can be in your pocket on the sidelines or in the, in the treatment room right underneath the table for you. And um, which kind of goes back to the original question that we developed was, well, how are people currently measuring the scapula? And it's kind of all over the place. We've got some observation methods, which are great for saying yes and no. And we've, you know, if they have abnormality or not, but then what do you do with that information? And then a few other researchers in the past have looked at inclinometers. So basically a glorified bubble level um, for measuring scapular tilt and uh, rotation. But that is again, gravity dependent. So you can really only measure frontal plane motion for scapular upward and downward rotation, and then uh, in the sagittal plane for scapular anterior and posterior tilting. So the beauty of the easy angle being that it has the inertial measurement unit in it means it can be calibrated to any surface and then brought, you know, a, a few feet away and then applied onto something while holding that plane. And that allowed us to measure the transverse plane which is very important for measuring scapular motion because it gives you a value. Not only does the easy angle give you a value for all three of those planes, but specifically for the transverse plane, you can measure 
a scapular rest position if they're in a more protracted or internally rotated state. And then as they move their arm, you can measure internal and external rotation of the scapula. So in all, I think that it provides values to clinicians that we didn't have before when we could just say yes or no if they were abnormal or not. Okay. And who, uh, maybe, maybe first talk us through um, how do you actually take the measurements? Because I'm sure mm-hmm. everybody is interested to hear about that. So in the three yeah. orthogonal planes, what, what's the procedure? Well, in the, if you have your, your patient or your subject sitting in a chair, it would be the easiest way to kind of describe this. If they're sitting in a chair facing the same direction that you're facing, uh, the frontal plane motion being the up and down of the scapula would be calibrated with the easy angle on its side on the floor parallel to the, the plane that you are facing or the, the subject is facing. And then uh, once it's cal- calibrated, it can just be applied to the scapular spine. And you'll notice right away if they're resting in upward or downward rotation just by the value that the easy angle provides. And then they can complete their motions. And you'll as long as you hold it there on their scapular spine, you'll watch it rotate upwards and downwards. Um, we use the same spot on the, on the scapular spine for transverse plane motion, except the easy angle needs to be now calibrated to uh, flat on the floor, but still to the, to the same parallel surface that the subject is facing. And then when it is applied on the, on the spine, it's applied uh, kind of directly so that the screen is facing up. So then you're kind of like, like you're on a table almost. And you'll notice again, most people of course are in a protracted state. So the, once you put it on, you should watch that value kind of go positive into internal rotation. And then as they complete their motions, you'll watch their scapula rotate around their thorax. And then uh, the fun one being sagittal plane would be, we, we in the study we were using a bubble level on a calibrated force plate, so we were very precise and determined true vertical. But for the, our recommendation would be to just calibrate to the leg of the table that the subject is on or to the leg of the chair just a vertical surface. And then I think one of the things we talked about was you could always walk over to the door frame and then measure or calibrate to the vertical, vertical plane of the door and then walk back over to the subject. And then the sagittal plane is where we put it on the medial border of the scapula. So that would be, you know, the easiest way to kind of get the vertical surface of the scapula, so to say. And then again, they complete their motion. You'll watch the anterior and posterior tilting. Fantastic. And who can benefit from this? So um, who's, who's actually going to use it? I mean, yeah, uh, <laughs> well, we would like everybody to be taking motion. Um, another great thing about the easy angle that, that is as a range of motion measurement is you don't just have to be measuring the scapula and then you could always take it off the scapula and then apply it to the humerus. So if you're looking at total arc of motion, if somebody raises their arm, you're measuring upward rotation, which is great. But then you can also tell them how high they're lifting their arm by applying it to their humerus. Um, And this is this is to answer your question where we can use it in practice and who uses it. Anybody who is the treating clinician or instructor can be using this to watch changes in motion. You know, you can measure your motion now and then do your therapy and measure after whether it be in the same session or a couple weeks later. But then also the, the patient enjoys it because they can see the value on the screen. And I think that's something that we talked about at the convention in Las Vegas was the patient enjoys watching like you were your example of the deep squat, right? They can see how far they're squatting. And if you want to, if the clinician didn't want them going beyond a certain level, they could tell them, you know, you're at the 90 degree level or wherever you may be, or you can watch the full range of motion progress over a treatment plan. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things, as, as we've talked about, that I really enjoy. As a, as a yoga teacher, I'm always working with students to try and um, usually to increase their flexibility and their range of motion. And it's, it is very, it's very subjective. <laughs> so it's wonderful to be able to quantify that for them and to be able to show them, OK, here's where you are now. And then, we, you know, once they've been doing the practice for a little while, they can actually see that they're making progress. Mm-hmm. I think that's where it's going to be most beneficial. And then the, the last place hopefully we'll get to this is we want more doctors to be using this. We want more people to actually share values, uh, whether it be between the clinician and, uh, and the physician who's treating. Um, you know, you can track changes over time. And I think that anytime you're taking a range of motion measurement, 
is a good thing because you can share it with other other people on the treatment team. Mm -hmm. And for for your study, this was uh, it was in, it wasn't inter radar, was it? We we examined both. We have uh, intra, so between uh, within oneself, and then also inter radar, so between clinicians, and um, we found very high reliability in both. Uh, higher within oneself as expected, and that's pretty common with any goniometer. Um, but also we looked between myself and the other, the other researcher, Nicole, on the project, and we were very high across days too, which was great. Um, anytime that you can repeat measurements after a week or two is, is a good thing and get fairly consistent results. Well, I'm really happy to hear that you managed to get fairly consistent results. Um, so is there, I mean, do you want to share anything about the, um, your new research or what you're going to do next? I wish I, wish I had a great answer for that one. We're, we're, we're excited for what's going to happen next. I think that, um, so I'm now at the University of Minnesota pursuing my PhD under Dr. Paula Ludwig and Justin Stacker. And um, we're, we're going to be looking at some good stuff kind of injury tracking data, as well as looking at some biomechanics. So we're excited for the next chapter, and we're starting in a couple of weeks. So Fantastic. after this summer, I'll give you a better answer. <laughs> That's great. Well, yeah. it, you know, um, we, we will make some videos that actually demonstrate, because we have, of course, we have a measurement poster and lots of measurement videos showing people how to take many different me measurements throughout the body. So we will make those videos for the scapula, and we'll, we'll share them. But we'll also share, along with this uh, podcast, a link to the study. And is it okay we also share your contact information in case anyone has any questions? and would like to follow up with you. Yeah, we can give up, out my email, my new email, and um, we'll see if anybody has, needs anything or has any questions. I'd be happy to talk to them. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so very much for the, for the second day in a row coming on to this podcast. <laughs> you, of you've course. done a wonderful job. I think this is very informative, and I hope that it will be very useful to the people that listen. Great. Well, thank you very much. Okay.